that I read that they were able to purchase it, which would have given them about 20% of the company, right? right? So Empire was sold, like we know Empire was sold, sold four years later, which kind of made the agreement null and void. And then three years later, um, in 1974, Sherman founded Apotex. Well, in 2000, 2007, those four orphans filed a lawsuit claiming a 20% stake in Apotex and dam- or, or at damages up to $1 billion on the grounds that Sherman failed to honor his 1967 Empire Option Agreement and breached his fiduciary uh, duty to his uncle's sons. So basically, like layman's terms, the brothers claimed that Empire led to Apotex. Yeah. Right? Which it did. Which it did. It did. And when you look at it through this lens, if you're a businessman and you're slaving away making this company, you turn this company that was struggling and now it's successful. And in the back of your mind, you're going, at any point in time, I could lose 20%. At any point. Tomorrow, if these people want to show up and buy it, it's theirs. And I will lose 20%. Yeah, but these people are also your fucking cousins who lost their parents. And one of those parents is the one that showed you the fucking ropes in this industry. And you had no I fucking dia going into it and he took you under his wing knowing that you lost your father at a very young age barry and was a different breed ropes. by all accounts he was cutthroat Absolutely. he didn't give a shit mm. all he well, it's interesting that you say that was making that money. you say that he's cutthroat and he didn't give a shit because the cousins contended that sherman had offered them remember we talked about all that financial assistance helping them with their fucking careers and bailouts and everything. He offered that financial assistance in the first place in order to make the cousins dependent on him and to keep them from learning about their rights to the business that he sold. Mm. So he used that $15 million that he would fund their, you know, failing business ventures and houses and stuff as a way to keep, you know, keep them under his thumb. Right. Yeah. Because they they were a lot of them, you know, because of the trauma and stuff, you know, had developed addiction issues that he, you know, by by rightly so helped them with. But was it out of the kindness of his heart or was it because, you know, it's like they're on a short leash. So he knows what they're doing. And then here's where things get interesting, because three months to the day that Barry and Honey were found dead. The lawsuit was dismissed. And stating the sale of Empire nullified the option agreement, and Apotex did not own or use any of the assets, goodwill, yeah. or property, or business of Lou Winter's former company. The, the claimed interest in Apotex was wishful thinking and beyond fanciful. And so, Sherman then countersued the cousins and was ordered, and they were ordered to pay upwards of $300,000 back to Sherman. And they have nothing. 300000 and he wanted a million. Yeah. Yeah. And the judge and the settles judge for, settled 300, for 300, now, The other thing is, so in that judgment, basically they told the, you know, the orphan cousins that like, hey, unfortunately, uh, you would have had to exercise your right to like to buy Empire. That doesn't was was so you would have had to exercise or or shown interest in exercising that right before the sale. When you were like 10 years old. But they didn't know. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. They didn't. They had no they idea. Had no clue. They had no idea they were entitled. They were to lied to, right? Well, and this is where the this is where the corporation comes in, right? When Empire dies, it's Apple. not Empire at yeah. all anymore. No, now it's Apple. Apple rises from the ashes. Yeah, and but it's a whole. They have a whole new legal entity in a new. And that's guaranteed. That's why he sold it. He did it. hundred percent. That's guaranteed. Why he started the new company because he knew it's the same. It, it got in the same industry. Why, why? This is a limited, you have a limited liability company, right? Yeah. The LLC. So these family members, one of them ended up, like we talked about, ended up dying. One of them who was still alive, Carrie, Carrie Winter, went in a very popular interview. Uh, we all watched it on the Fifth Estate. You can watch it on YouTube. And in this interview- Is it Carrie or is it Kevin? It's Carrie. Carrie Winter. Carrie Winter. Oh, okay. Um, he actually claims that in the 90s, Barry had hired him to kill Honey Sherman. Claimed that he was getting sick of being around her, couldn't stand being in the same room with her, and basically claimed that, I want you to whack my wife. There is a... So if you're not from Canada, there is a very good investigative journalist 
series called the fifth estate, which they interview this, they interview him and they ask him this and he spills the beans. Like, yeah, I was, I was asked to kill. And in the end we didn't go through with it. Like they got cold feet or whatever. So they actually put his feet to the fire a little bit, which I was really impressed by. And they brought in a polygraph and made, made Carrie do the polygraph and ask him if this was, you know, the story was in fact true. And he in fact failed the lie detector. And then after this, he was obviously quite distraught. And he's like, well, you know, like, I, that's what I remember. That's what happened. And then they ask him while he's on the po- like polygraph, did you kill uh, Barry and Honey Sherman? And he refused to answer. His lawyer was there, refused the answer. But you know what he did say, which gets in my mind is pretty much just as incriminating. They ask him, like, well, how too. did you feel against your cousin? And he basically breaks down a bit and says, my cousin lied to me and stole everything from me and said, I would talk about killing Barry. And it was very graphic, Winter said. Fantasize about killing. Yeah. He would come out of the Apotex parking lot and I would, behind, I would be hiding behind a car and I would just decapitate him. I wanted to roll his head down the parking lot and I'd sit there and wait for the police. And he, he, he basically in this interview goes, he goes, I had every, he's like, I, he's like, you look at me. As someone who wanted to kill him, I did want to kill him. I hated him. I wanted to see him dead. I hated him. I had all the motives. I had all the motives uh, to kill him. And, and I have, no I have alibi. zero alibi. Like, I have I zero at, alibi. He goes, I was at home watching TV. That's it. That's all I was he says doing. It was very, and he said, it would, would have been very easy for me to have left work at any time because I'm not on the clock. I could have easily have driven over to the Sherman home and did the deed. And he said... In another interview, he said it right to his face. He wished he did it. He's like, I wish I did it. At the same time, he threw, I mean, he lived a life of uh, depression and, you know, obviously the childhood trauma. So it turned him to drugs and he was a, he admits to being a crack head. Not just, he didn't just do crack. He was a crack head, meaning he. There's no sugar coating. Yeah. There's no sugar coating. He was a crack head. He was lost in the crack for a while and he's come out of it. But yeah, he pretty much says like, I wish I did it. I could have done it. I have, I have no all the alibi. Means to do it. I have all the means to do it. But it wasn't me. Wild. But also but denies me. doing it. Yeah. Denies uh, denies the polygraph when asked and denies anything uh, any any further comment about and it. And he has been cleared as a suspect supposedly. Yes. Supposedly. Um so like maybe there's some information that the private investigators of the RCMP that are you know what it's not uncommon for investigations to hold a couple pieces of information close to the chest that would only the killer would know to you know to make sure it's a solid case so for whatever reason uh, we don't really know but carrie winter has been cleared he's not a, he's no longer a suspect right now well he's he's not officially a suspect let's put it like this because when you look at him you know he, he's suspicious. Is suspicious some of these things he's saying he's suspicious now, is, he's got to be the only family member that we're going to look at right before we get into that, though, before we get into family, I just wanted to touch on something because it's a little bit smaller. Okay. So we've talked about the fact that Barry's been prone to litigation. Canada's most litig- litigious man, right? Yeah. So, well, the house that they were currently living in, right? Yeah. When they had it built, the Shermans actually sued the designers and builders of the house for poor construction and recouped. Two million of the two point three cost, so they built the ho- the house for two point three million and recouped two million of it. And as you can imagine, the parties involved in building the house took like a fucking ridiculous they financial hit. Well, these are most of right? these people are they're blue collar workers. And you know, you know where the most contention was held. You know where the most acrimony about the fucking property was was held. The pool, and the pool house. Okay, who had, who had come and go fucking whenever they wanted in the last little bit? Who had free range of the house? Renovators. Who left a window, who left the window fucking half open to let paint dry? Right, renovators. I see see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this, but, but, was it the same, is it the same rent, the same builder that was... Well, I mean, put through do, litigation? You think, do you think, do you think Barry knows? There's no way. Yeah. But you have no idea, right? One of this guy, one of these guys, one of these contractors it could have been, started it could as have a been, framer, yeah. started his own business, became a contractor. Well, he got sued to shit and went broke. So he had to go back to swinging a hammer. 
Well, mm-hmm. so he goes back and works as a fucking labor swing and hammer and takes a job at the same house that he helped build that financially destroyed him. So one of the renovators, one of the contractors. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.